thank you for coming. Um, my name's Ruth. I'm here to talk about Charlie Red, um, which is an art collective that I found. I'm just checking is actually on there. Great, be cool. Um, so, check it out. That's me two years ago, together with um, Adam Duncan, our senior concept artist at League of Geeks. Um, back in the old arcade, two years ago, I was hired to work as an artist at League of Geeks here in Melbourne. Um, I originally moved here from Berlin. And, yeah, so I'm German. Um, uh, so, the culture clash um, and being new and feeling different in any way, including being an artist, while desperately trying to connect <laughs> with people, really mess with my head. I really, you know, I had, I had a lot to learn. So it was really tricky. Um, it was very exciting, but kind of tricky. Um, and I found that, <laughs> casting shade, um, Melbourne is a town of social groups. People keep their groups of mates separate and only ever hang out in their groups or with their loved ones. Um, it's hard when you're alone and it's harder to feel like you belong. Um, I started making friends, Yay. some of which were artists too, which was really nice. Um, still, whenever I'd have a late night art emergency, and I'm sure you know those, um, I'd be scrambling for people to text to and I'd feel guilty for bothering them with my terrible colour and perspective questions and, oh, you know, they all have their own private lives and similarly, I would see them post their work in progress art um, to social media only to receive extremely wild and varied feedback um, that wasn't always very helpful. Um, yeah, so, you know, that was weird. Um, later on, I started a Discord with my closest uni friends from back in Europe. Um, we were, and we still are, like a witch's coven, um, who help each other out with art, with work, with life advice, despite the big time zone differences. So I was able to throw my late night art problems into our Discord there and then receive quick and skilled help because they're also artists. Um, so this Discord was and still is an invaluable resource and the closest thing to home that I have. Um, I wanted to create a coven for Melbourne artists just like our little Discord. Like a, a cool zone in which artists could feel comfortable posting their shitty sketches and stupid questions at any time. Um, basically I wanted to make a little bubble that would spark conversation and draw people together both online and maybe later on in person as well. I reached out on Twitter and I found that people love the idea of a space in which shy artists could feel comfortable and accepted and where people could support each other and help each other grow both professionally and personally. So I made one. Um, so I had to start somewhere like, huh, what do you, how, do you, huh? how do you get people to join a thing? So I wrote my closest art friends and I pitched the idea of an art collective to them. Hey, let's get together and be cool artists. Um, they, they liked it. They were like, yes, let's do it. And they helped me through the first baby steps on our way to Charlie Red. First, we had to set up our online platforms for communication. So we set up a test Discord just to check how Discord feels with like different channels and how productive communication would take place in there. And then we moved over to Slack because of image threading, which is very, very... Yeah, and threading in general, which is really great um, if you work with visuals and if you want to have constructive conversations and not get lost in the spaghetti of chat messages. Um, during this time, I kept spamming people with a million ideas um, as to what our name should be. <laughs> um, this is Benjamin E. Here he is. <laughs> um, Benjamin E. is an art director at um, an unannounced... Liam Esler, Gang Studio, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Ben and I, I remember, we had our first brainstorming session at Shawcross on Brunswick Street. It's a pizza place. Um, so we had heaps of pizza, and we were just brainstorming as to what this collective could be called, what its identity could be, what, you know, what it, what's the icon and stuff. So here are the very first terrible sketches we did. Um, we went through all the vegetables, like... Art avocado, art asparagus, 
really terrible, like, something like, we thought, we wanted like a cute little emblem, something neutral, you know, something positive, maybe a, <laughs> maybe a, a, something, something artsy, but something positive, something, something cute. It, I had really terrible art puns, like subsurface gathering, and uh, it was really painful. And I still regret not using this uh, iPhone, which is just the best thing I've ever drawn. Don't, do not steal. This is my art. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> turns out coming up with an identity with a, like a logo and a name and stuff is so much harder than you'd think. Um, I also went <laughs> through the entire Wikipedia list of Crayola crayon colors just to see if I can maybe create something like that would sound a little bit like those old expressionist art collectives back in the day, like the, um, the Blaue Reiter in Germany, like the Blue Reiter probably called. Um, oh god, Discord doesn't keep uh, their history logs for too long because I did want to go in there and find all the terrible name ideas I had and Ben still won't stop calling me after the beautiful colour, Meat Brown. Oh, why is this a colour name? Um, until finally I decided, okay, it's going to be this because it, it, essentially Charlie derives from this coffee shop that my art friends and I met up in, uh, which is called Sir Charles on Johnson Street, you've probably been there, and red because red's the best colour. Um, and I thought, yes, I have a name, now we just need some logo, whatever, it's fine, and then, you know, we can finally start, because this has been ta had been taking ages. And I thought, nice, this is my first logo idea, I'll do that, this is so cool, see the R and the C, this kind of connect or whatever, it's fine, until I realised that I had accidentally created a logo that looked exactly like the logo of a German antivirus software <laughs> that nobody told me about. And it was actually, it was so bad. <laughs> ben, Ben's reaction to that, and it was really, really sad about that. Um, it was very unfortunate, I was crushed. I couldn't, I couldn't, I, it, it was probably like in the back of my head and no Australians like know this German antivirus software company so it must have happened and nobody told me until I realised one night I was like <gasps> and <laughs> I have to do it all again. So after many, many iterations of scruples and stuff um, and um, a whole lot of research that I've put into this, I did a whole talk on just the logo design alone at a, one of our art events um, a couple of months ago. So it was, it's a whole different talk. So I found something that I kind of liked, this sort of thing where C and R smooshed together and look like a speech bubble and it kind of communicates conversation and everything. I'm, I'm really smart with my designs. <laughs> um, and uh, then I combined the two, found, um, found a way to get this logo happening. And then we were finally able to start. I was like, okay, we have a name. We have an image logo. Um, I can now send out our first round of Slack invites, which I did at 3 a.m. from my phone in my bed. I remember that. I was like, I need to do this today. And I did. And then when the first people joined, I was able to say, I'm not just talking about this thing anymore. I've actually done it. You know when you say you're going to do something, but you never do it? I finally did it. It's like, I did it. <laughs> so um, today we are Charlie Red. We are digital art collective based in Melbourne. We now have our internal Slack. We have social media, a social media presence where we retweet people's art that they're making here in Melbourne to help them get more followers and get more visibility going. And we have live events that we run at Bar SK on Smith Street. Thank you, Louis. Um, but more about that later. First of all, um, before that, I'm going to talk about a bunch of do's and don'ts when it comes to founding an art collective and what that even involves. Um, the first thing is prepare to be in charge. Um, you gotta be, you know, you gotta, you, you start a thing, you're responsible. And for that, because of that, you have to be approachable. Be there for your people. Um, be almost something like a role model to them because you set the tone for your community um, if you meet when you meet people in person, think about your body language, um, think about, you know, the, the way you come across if you're positive, um, and communicate that you stand behind your idea with confidence. 
resolve conflicts. Um, good communication skills are required if you're in a leading position and there's a whole bunch of other people involved in your little group because things can happen or misunderstandings can happen and stuff. So um, luckily I learned a lot at, at League of Geeks about good communications and both internally and in terms of our, um, our player community. So if you haven't checked out Darcy Smith's community management talk that he did yesterday, um, go look, at, look it up online. Um, yeah, if things ever escalate or go bad, you have to jump in. You signed up for this responsibility, you have to live up to your position. Um, but at the same time, don't be a dictator. Don't be like, I'm the boss. Everybody do what I say, even though that'd be great, but um, you can't do that. So when it comes to big decisions, ask your artists what they want. Um, use polls and check in with them. I remember um, recently I set up a poll. I was like, oh, maybe, you know, there's so many awards happening. There's awards happening tonight. Um, people like awards. People like winning things. Maybe we need like a Charlie Red art contest with some awards or whatever. Um, so I posted that in our Slack and everybody was like, no. Nah. That's terrible. We don't want that. We don't want the competition. We don't want these like weird vibes and people would rather just have an exhibition or whatever. And I thought, I'm glad I asked. Like, don't just like do things without asking your community what they want because you know I don't I don't want to impose weird um, ideas and vibes onto them. So just yeah, check in with them. Super important. Be humble. Um, and that means that you shouldn't feel like you have to do it all on your own. I didn't need to do all this graphic design and identity work by myself. Like, I realized way too late that I should have been asking people to help me with this stuff and to really reach out to like proper, I don't know, graphic designers to do this sort of stuff. I'm an artist myself, but um, my graphic design skills are still developing. And um, that's why it took many months for me to actually get to the point where we could start, uh, when in fact I could have just hit some people up and get things going in a matter of weeks. Um, so there's a dude called Ray Dalio and he wrote a book called Principles. So it's really good. You should all go and read it. Um, don't read the first chapter, it's really boring, but afterwards it's really good. Um, he talks about humility and understanding what you should and shouldn't be doing. Essentially, it's about being humble and having this humility means that you need to get an idea of what you're capable of and what you're not capable of and then use that to your advantage. Just go, okay, I can do this one thing really well, but I'm humble enough to admit and to see that I totally don't know how to do that other thing. But there's ways of getting other people to do it because it's more important to get stuff done than to be able to say, I did it all on my own. Look at me, I'm amazing. Nobody cares about that. People care about things happening. Um, yeah, he talks about that. That's just one point. So read the rest of the book. It's really good. Um, yeah, so working with your limits, using them and getting other people on board to make things happen is super, super important if you want to get shit done in less than two years. Um, so yeah, team up if you can. Find people who care and won't let you down in terms of organizing stuff, moderating Slack and other comms, um, posting on social media, updating the website, WordPress things, commitments, I know it's hard. Um, but understand and remember that people have a million commitments. So at the start I had a bunch of people and I was hoping that, you know, like maybe we can run this thing together. But I, you know, like it turns out that a lot of them were like, okay, look, this sounds cool and I'd love to help, but I have a lot of real life stuff happening. I have a lot of my, my own life to live right now. I don't have the time for this. And I was like, thanks so much for clearing this up. I super appreciate it because that way you know, you know you, you're not just constantly being disappointed, disappointed in people and you don't put pressure on other people going, oh, why don't you care about this one thing that I care so much about as much as I do? You know, like, what's this about? God, yeah. I remember my old piano teacher locking me into a room and forcing me to practice the piano because playing the piano was the most important thing to him. And I was like 10. I was crying. Like I was locked into his room and at music school just like having to play the piano. And I was like, why is he punishing me? Like that's terrible. Um, so remember, people have their own things that they care about. 
Um, but if people like honest like sign up to work with you on things, you know, like appreciate that. Um, I definitely jump on those opportunities. Um, personal drama is real, right? So expect personal troubles to mess with your life at any given moment. But don't let your projects suffer from it too much, if you can. Um, and for that, you have to combine forces. Ideally, ideally, you'd have like a board of admins to help you sail the ship. Um, you know, when you're busy drinking, being sad, or taking drugs on a self-discovery trip, like it would be so good to like just you know that there's somebody um, who's there who, to check on other people, who's there to run this thing with you. You know, like or maybe you you even you just like you slept in or something. Something happened, and having people there for you is really important. Sometimes you get home from work or your relatives are getting sick or whatever, and like your your personal life really makes it hard to work on this like personal project that you have to, that you know doesn't give you any cash money yet. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's really important to um, take a break and recognize that this is happening and you can't just keep on working nonstop. Um, running a community, this is me like every night, like I'm super <laughs> like, um, running a community solo is possible, but it's hard work. So definitely, yeah, try finding people to help you run things but also who motivate you and stand behind you and, and remind you that this is really worth working on and this is, this is really cool. Um, you know, that people that kind of just kick your butt and you really can't be asked getting stickers printed or other things printed or... I don't know why people like printing things so much. Um, but yeah, another big thing, don't stress too hard, but also don't stop. So if things get really messy and stressful, it's important to not put too much pressure on yourself because it's okay when things are slow as long as they're not standing still because you have a lot of commi commitments too and you got to recognize that as a, as a founder, as a leader. So it's totally fine that things can be slow sometimes and you know like it's taking me ages to do another post or whatever as long as you're not abandoning your project because that would be terrible. Um, next up are a bit of um, tips in terms of events, because we run events. Events build culture, and yeah, communities really need that. If you want a cool community, you need events. Um, because you want people to be able to participate in something and have these shared experiences that they can bond over. Um, that's why we started um, Charlie Red Social. So like, Every two months or so, we um, meet up at Bar SK um, to do these like little gatherings, and their format are heavily inspired by the works of Berlin's indie dad, Lorenzo Pelia. I'm not sure if anybody knows Lorenzo, <laughs> but he's the best. Lorenzo is amazing. So he does the Berlin game scene like website and social events. He jo he does join local multiplayer events. He talks a lot about VarioWare games because he loves them. And my favorite thing that he does is when he, he likes to take his own plate out to lunch and get his takeaway food on his plate and then walks back into the office. Um, I think that's pretty punk. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, he's the best. So he, oh. starting a sentence and then drinking, sorry. <laughs> he runs Talk and Play. It's really great. So this is, um, about indie, de indie devs in Berlin and um, not just art related, specifically games and all things, yeah, game development. And the program, uh, the event works like this. It has two halves, two parts to it. The first half is set, um, is filled with a lot of talks by different developers about whatever they're working on. And the second half is networking and playing locally made working progress and finished games. And you know, like talking about like job openings and other gigs and stuff, so it's really great. Here, um, here he is with me, me doing a talk at Talk and Play. And cut to me ripping it off for Charlie Red Social. <laughs> um, yeah, so with his consent, I, I sort of l adapted his format of Talk and Play and used it for Charlie Red, where um, in the first half of the evening, people talk about their art and talk about their, you know, like they, they would do, there would be about three to four 
um, 10 to 15 minute presentations of artists talking about what they drew the other week or how they rigged this character or how to do taxes as a freelance artist and stuff. So it's super cool and then we have a break and then we hang out for drinks and chats um, and looking at portfolios and stuff afterwards and it's been great fun. So here's a bunch of photos. <laughs> so cool, yeah. Um, here's the paperback wombat. Um, and yeah, people like to hang out and draw. And it's super, super heartwarming to see that people enjoy this stuff. So if you want to run events for your collective, um, spruik it well in advance. So make noise about your event early on, at least three weeks or so ahead of time, so people can throw it in their calendar because everybody's super busy. That's my big don't, it's my big no-no. Don't wait for the stuff. Like I've been very short notice with all the events, but our turn-ups have been great nonetheless. Not sure how, but it was it's great. I'm super, super glad. Um, help your speakers prep. So help them out with slides and presentations and stuff ahead of time. You know, you'd, you'd think artists can make look, things look great and they're like, they know what they're doing visually and stuff, but sometimes like artists are not necessarily public speakers and some of them aren't. And um, it's important to remind them, hey, this needs to be, you know, I need, I need to be able to read this from like 20 meters in the back. Um, or like, don't, please don't put massive novels on your slides and stuff. Like just checking, checking in on them and like helping them or even just like structuring their talk and stuff, giving them a little bit of advice can help because not all artists are part of the games community where they go to conferences all the time. Some people like need to, like there's, there's some artists that are part of the collective but they haven't, they don't have a lot of conference experience or whatever. And at the start, I kind of forgot about that. And then I realized, oh yeah, that's right. You know, you gotta help people out to learn this stuff. Um, it's really, yeah, it's really helpful to just be there for them. Also invite journalists. Like, um, you need to be able to break your own social bubbles. I feel like a lot of people know me in games development and stuff, but in order for more artists and more, more like, diverse people to join the collective, it's important to hit up journalists to write about this stuff so other people can actually find out about it and maybe decide if they want to join. This is something I haven't done yet, but I'd love to do that. It's also why I'm talking about it here today, so. Uh -huh. um, Water time. <laughs> Next up are a few do's and don'ts during the events. So when you run events, I have to say like I've never run events before. This is all my, you know, this, these are all learnings that I've made um, with my time at Charlie Red. So the first thing to do when you want to run events is be a good host. Um, arrive on time. Don't be late to your own events. I've done that. I'm so ashamed. So take it seriously enough to just like arrive on time and do things properly. Like. You, you don't just, you're not just arriving on time because you're the person running it, but also because you need to be there for your speakers and stuff. Um, yeah, brief your speakers when they arrive, have them arrive early on time, tell them what the equipment is, where the toilets are, where the drinks are, what the program is. Check in with them emotionally, like, hey, how are you feeling today? Are you okay? Are you, if you're too nervous, you don't have to do this. This is not the end of the world if you can't do it. Just like, be there for them, it's fine. Um, prepare for trouble. So sometimes, you know, speakers or venue people or anybody, they just, sometimes people don't get back to you in time or they forget things or they have their phone batteries die on you and then you're like, oh, what do I, what do I do now? Or like, there was no adapter. That's <laughs> why so it took so long to set up, but that's okay, that's fine. Um, in the end, people hopefully don't really care about this sort of stuff um, and it's important not to stress. It's also important that your speakers don't stress about this stuff. Um, introductions really matter. So as a host, memorize people's bios to introduce them properly. People suck at introducing themselves properly. Um, sometimes they're self-deprecating or they think people know who they are or like it's not worth mentioning what they're working on. And if you take that weird, awkward first step off of their shoulders, it can really help just make it all run smoothly and, you know, put a bit of consistency into your whole event structure. Um, and it feels a lot, a lot more professional. It's really cool. So yeah, do that. I've been, it's been really hard to memorize people's bios and I've been trying that from the very first event on. 
um, I'm because I'm bad with words, um, but I'm, I've been it's been getting better with every time. So even as a host, you're not even doing all the speaking and the, the talking and stuff as much, but you you learn with every time, um, and you're kind of presenting as well. So what I also really like is optimizing the presentation flow of the whole event. So if there's not a lot of demonstration happening or, you know, like people having to use their own equipment, I can recommend using a single PDF or Google Slides presentations, presentation with everyone's slides in it and then a bunch of intermission slides that still remind people that, oh yeah, this is, this is the event, this is still Charlie Red Social and stuff because that way you don't have to uh, wrangle all these hardwares and then it's a different computer and then I need to log into your computer and it's uh, kind of stupid. So this is super helpful. Do you see you just, you just stop when you're done and you leave the machine and someone else jumps on it. Also open and close your event um, properly. So it's so nice if you can lead your event with an introduction and a program and then close it when the, the talk bit is done. Lorenzo Pilia does that beautifully for talk and play every time and they've been doing it oh, maybe almost 50 times now. It's been around for a while. He explains what talk and play is you know, what's happening during that night, um, who's on and, you know, what, what's, what's there to do and stuff and like hashtags and safe space policy and all this sort of stuff really matters because it really, it, it puts your whole event that's very like, it's very, you know, unofficial or very um, almost intimate, you know, very personal, puts it a bit of on, a, on a more professional level um, without losing its, its charm. Um, and here's a bunch of tips to, for, you know, what to do once your event is over. Um, keep the vibes going. So post those event photos immediately. <laughs> keep things buzzing. I have not been able to do that because um, there was a lot of real life things happening and I'm the only one running this. See, that's why you need a whole bunch of people to do this with, with you. Um, but the photos are up, going up this week. So they're, they're beautiful, they're really nice. We've had a bunch of photographers. Oh yeah, hire a photographer. I did that too, I forgot to add that. Um, every time, pretty short notice, but I would know somebody who would be um, able to take a bunch of photos and then I'd pay them and then I have photos and then we put them on social media. And it's great because that way people can share their cool photos of them presenting about their, their art and stuff and having been to this cool place and it really draws people in. Um, and then, you know, get your talk submissions in early. So what I found out found is really helpful to do is organize your talk submissions from, you know, your community um, soon after the end of your just, you know, your, the, the event that you just did when people are still fired up. Like people would come to the event and go, oh, I could do a talk. This is not that scary. Like I could talk about what I draw, drew or like I know this thing about freelance thing, client behavior. I can talk, um, <laughs> so that's the best time to, uh, to ask about submissions and then you lock them in and then they have to commit because, you know, they said they were going to do it, if you lock them in, that's it. <laughs> um, and obviously, be proud. Brand your events properly, make noise, explain why these events are great for everybody involved, explain what's in it for speakers as well as for attendees. Um, because that's a sure way to get people interested in coming with every time. Speakers get a lot of like public speaking experience and they also really have to think about what they're even doing at work, you know, like they have to think about their processes and refine them because they have to prepare them for a talk, they have to explain how to do the art that they're doing. Um, so that's a very good exercise and it's a lot, you know, like once you get used to public speaking, you're a lot less scared of it. Um, and attendees obviously rock up, learn about art. Wow, now I know how to use clipping masks in Photoshop. Whatever, you know, whatever it is people talk about, you learn from it. It's really good. I've been told that, you know, um, the fact that this is some sort of, that this is a for artists, by artists format feels like a good and reliable insider source for info on questions like why do clients think that they always have to reject the first idea as if it's like a rule? I didn't really care what it is, or what, what about artist mental health, or yeah, again, tax questions and stuff, um, copyright questions, this sort of stuff is a big draw, so this is really nice. And also, I've been told that there's 
neighboring industries that have taken interest in our events. So 2D animation people who are completely outside of my game circles and you know other people's game circles have now started rocking up to our events. Um, and more overlap is anticipated with the, um, the collective growing, which is great. Um, a next big point outside of the whole event stuff is to have the right values. It sounds so high and mighty, but it's true. Um, you have to establish and act on a set of values just like a company um, because you need them to remind yourself of why you're doing this and why it's worth believing in. And your community needs them too. So here's a bunch of values <laughs> that um, Charlie Red has. For artists by artists is our first and foremost, like the biggest value about Charlie Red. Um, I'm often stressed out about not being too vocal about this collective and the fact that this community is for us, you know, that, and that I've already created a space where people can already like hang out in and where people can, where this exchange can happen, helps me relax about the fact that I, you know, like I need to spend more time on this thing, but also I have other personal things to do after my, full, you know, when I get home from my full-time job. So reminding yourself of, you know, like the, these pillars will keep you sane. Another big value, connect locals and break their social bubbles. Um, I found it so important. Like the thing is with my little like which is coven on Discord with my my close uni friends, they live in they live in Europe. I never see them. I really want to hang out with them but I can't. Melbourne people though, they deserve to get to know each other and then they can hang out because they all live in the same city. So it's important that whoever wants to join the collective, to me it's for the first maybe year or two that you know these people are actually from Melbourne so they can come to the events get to know each other um, and then maybe later on when we really like when this collective really takes off I'm super happy to invite maybe international people who just sit in remotely and stuff but for now this is super important that this connection happens um, sharing knowledge big value so exchanging knowledge and developing skills together and also improving individuals thanks um, productivity super 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 important how many minutes though I didn't understand. 15. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, yeah, this is super good. Sharing your knowledge um, isn't just great for whoever gets to hear it. It's also great. It also motivates you. It's like, oh, I can help people out. I know stuff. I'm cool. I'm cooler than I think I am. You know, like, this is super valuable. And um, you getting all this knowledge in, it's like, oh, I feel so powerful. Now I know how to do these things and I will do them. I'm inspired. Um, provide visibility, big pillar. So Charlie Red helps younger and talented artists gain visibility through our social media. So I'm on Twitter all day retweeting people's art. Um, super important. Um, and one of the biggest ones, they're all, they're all really big. <laughs> they're all really important to me, is supporting mental health. Um, Charlie Red is here to fight imposter syndrome, fear of failure and procrastination and stuff, you know, by encouraging a team spirit and providing a safe space to post art and grow from mistakes. I really don't like retweeting when people, retweeting people's art tweets, when they're self-deprecating, when they're negative, when people apologize for their art. Like, and even when they, they say this sort of stuff in, in our Slack, I make a massive effort to jump in and go like, oi, you're literally making something out of nothing. Be proud of yourself. Be proud of your art. Don't feel bad about your art. Like, obviously, everybody's got a long way to go, but we're not here to feel sorry about our art or feel self-conscious. And so, fighting that out of people. <laughs> um, and yeah, developing as a community. So, what I'd love for this collective to be is, you know, something where people collaborate, do cool things together, maybe create zines or comics or merchandise and be visible enough to people that have nothing to do with art. So especially developers and other people who are in need of artists so that they can come back to Charlie Red and go, hey, so we have this new project and we're looking for a bunch of artists. Are there any here? Um, so that's really cool. I want this to happen for Charlie Red. Get your values straight to help you guide your collective and make calls if they're needed. And iterate your values. Make sure that they grow with your community. So. Setting up values is super hard. Everyone has terrible values for themselves. 
and it takes an active effort to actually revisit them and think about them, define them, and as you go through life with them, make sure that they're still up to date um, and our collective needs that as well. So, yeah, continue what you started. I want to try, as a, as a founder, it's important to put in um, constant, minimum but constant effort um, because just so people that are new to Melbourne have a chance to jump into this colourful community and receive recognition as artists. Uh, I was told that, you know, like, and it's true, I mean, constant, com constant contribution to this collective isn't necessary. You don't have to be like, every day I'm scribbling something. It doesn't, it doesn't need to feel like, uh, now I have this commitment to this collective. Not at all. But it's, it's, it's there so that you know that you're not entirely out on the outside and forced to shovel your way into long-established, rigid social circles. And people, having left Melbourne, told me that Charlie Red has become an invaluable connection to home. And that means a lot. So obviously, once you leave Melbourne, you can still stay in the Slack. It's OK. I'm not going to kick you out. <laughs> so yeah, obviously, that's, that's super, super important to have these like strings back home. Keep your doors open. Um, Charlie Red is not specifically restricted to the games industry artist. And that's why it brings in a fairly diverse set of artsy people who help each other learn more varied things um, and get more connections both within and outside of the games industry. So as a founder, I have to write myself to look for people and send out invites whenever I have the time. So I have to you know, make an effort of thinking, OK, this needs, to, this needs to keep going. You're not done after the first two sets of invites. Um, and this sounds weird, but be your own member. Um, as a founder, it's important to put effort into casual connecting. So sharing stories with people, talk about life, venting in Slack. Just show that you're human and draw people together on a personal level. This is really hard and awkward to do in the beginning because nobody really knows each other. But conversation really sparks relationships. And once people who bond over Slack, so online, start hanging out at events, they have an easier time establishing friendships. And I think that's what's most important about this whole thing. It really helps bonding with people early on because we are all rising to the top together. I've made so many friends through a whole lot of volunteering and hanging out at, hanging out at events back in Europe. Um, and these people are still my friends and these connections mean the world to me. We were all like little babby volunteers running around, being treated badly because we were volunteers. Oh, it's like a 10 year something so mean. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, you, you grow and you learn a lot. So I guess it would be great. It would be great to receive funding. So I'm looking into that so that we can afford doing bigger exhibitions, um, you know, like podcast interviews and zines and merchandise and stuff. Because so far I've been paying it all and um, it's a lot. So um, long term, it'd be great to turn our monthly themes into maybe exhibitions monthly exhibitions somewhere, or even like very long term, have a little gallery um, where we maybe have screens up that would show the most recent pieces. So you can always walk in and check on the new art. Um, even doing, yeah, even doing live streams would be great so that, you know, international people can like tune in, be like, hey, what's Melbourne up to? Wow, I learned about art um, from these Australian artists. That's really cool, you know, like just getting the word out both in Melbourne and onto the rest of the world. You know, I spent a lot of time getting to know Australia. I learned a lot and I received so many wonderful things and made incredible experiences with people here. Charlie Red is my small way to give back and I really hope that it will grow into something big one day. But yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Have you, this is my Twitter stuff. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask them maybe now, but also the outside. And if you want to join, send me, my DMs are open, send me your email address and maybe a link to your portfolio because this is artists only. <laughs> Cool, awesome. Does anyone want to know anything about running a collective? Yes. After how long since you kind of launched your collective did you run the first event? Um, 
Yes, about three to four months after. I think I started this collective, I launched it in like March this year. And then March, March, April, around then. And then, <laughs> and then we started our first event in June, right? June, yeah. That was it, Charlie Red Social was the first event that happened in June. So I try to keep this off fairly quickly. Yeah, yes. Yeah, sometimes things get really quiet and it's important to, to not get things to a point where it goes silent. That's why I constantly just throw my personal shit in there, just like, hey, what are, how are you doing? Today, today's rain is annoying. What's everyone having for lunch? I'm, I'm inspired. Just, con like, just insert yourself in there as well and people will see that and contribute. Yes. How do you prevent that from just being a streamer and yourself talking to yourself? People have decency, and so they see, maybe maybe they're sorry for me, I'm not like, I don't know, they respond, and um, there's a bunch of people in that are really, that really care about art, um, and they keep on posting their stuff in there, and they keep on trying to, you know, like, connect with people, or, and that's like the most, the biggest thing, our Slack has become a resource for people, so people get like technical issues, or like their iPads break, and then they need help, or, or like, a bug, something comes up, and Charlie Red has become a place where they can go to to receive help really quickly. So this is also, you know, something that people remember, and I love seeing that. I also love that I'm not the only one who jumps onto these questions, also because I can't always answer these questions. I don't know what, how to do rigging properly, like, I'm not the expert here, but then somebody else, I see other people jumping onto there because people are dedicated, people really care, and I think a big part of that is also because it's locals because they've gone to the events because people have gotten to know each other and it's a little bit you know like a little family it's really nice yes um the most stressful part is i think um this crazy social anxiety you have when you keep talking about it and people and you you, you constantly have this paranoia of thinking do people think about how long it's taking me like is this like do i look do i look silly like um so that's the most stressful part actually your own brain just going like oh no like i need to be qu quicker with this stuff and like people just like stomp their cool projects out of nothing you know out of the ground instantly why can't i do that why am i not super experienced and can, can just whip shit up um i think i'm i was the re the most stressful part within the whole thing i i stressed myself out the most um, but otherwise, what's most stressful, I think, is actually, other than that, is getting people to get back to you um, and just communications and stuff because people have different lifestyles and just because you're sitting in front of your computer waiting for this response doesn't mean that people are going to be there really quickly to answer your shit. So yeah, it's those two things, you and other people. <laughs> yes. Very. Very? Yeah. Um, I come, I've lived in Berlin for a while, and in Berlin, every traffic light has a political opinion stuck on it, <laughs> or like a funny sticker. It's sticker city, it's crazy, it's everywhere, it's so incredible, and that's kind of like, people walk through life, you know, like looking at stuff. They browse the web looking at stuff. Um, we're a vi like a visual sort of, we're an artsy community, and I think it's great to have a face, to just, especially because we're artists to just go like, this is us. Um, this is our identity. We have set values that are connected to that. So it's very similar to a company, except we don't make money yet. Um, <laughs> so I think, I don't know if that answers your question, but I feel that people can identify with that, can recognize it elsewhere and can, you know, feel like they belong to something, something that's a thing. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think I'm too lazy for that. I would just be talking to myself in public, being like, as in, in our Slack, just openly being very lonely, just with myself. No, that's never happened. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, maybe I've already done that. Very good. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, back about the slides, do you screen them before you get people to do it, or do you go in blind? 
yeah, that's a good point. So I try to do that when I have enough time. I don't go through there going, that's not true. You can't say that. Or like, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I like to look at their design and stuff. So sometimes I'm like, hey, this is not readable. Like, especially like on my screen right now, there needs to be more contrast so people at the back rows can read the stuff. Um, or it needs to, the size of the font needs to be bigger. Um, and, or even there's not enough. It's boring. Please put more slides in and don't put so much text on there. There's, there's a lot of things you can do wrong with slides. They're never perfect, um, except Lorenzo's. He has the best slides. <laughs> um, yeah. So like, I like to do that, but I'm not, um, especially when it's like very short notice, I'm not gonna be like, redo your slides at 2 a.m. Like, I'm not like that, <laughs> but it's fine. Yes? I've heard of these, um, what are they called? Incubator programs. There's a bunch of programs that you can apply to. So I just have to write them a text about who we are and what we want to do, I think. And then maybe we get money and then I can pay for cool like audiovisual equipment or bigger venues, which is, which is a big point. That'd be really cool because then we can really throw. <laughs> no, we're going to your place after the party. <laughs> of course, we're going to SK to party after. Um, and like exhibitions and prints and stuff that all costs money. I've been paying for web hosting and like font files and other things like, and my, my, technically my company pays for their sub subscriptions for the tools that are used to make these things. So like there's a lot of money involved that, you know, we could have, we could get from funding um, for bigger projects, that'd be great. So I think Film Victoria, Creative Victoria is where I have to go. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you outside. That'd be great. So if you have got any more questions, even personal ones, or if you want to join or whatever, if you have complaints, you can meet me out the front door. Thank you so much for coming.